Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. It's that time of the year where I got to put my tropical plants and cane and lilies to bed. I want to show you how to treat your tropical plants as perennials, especially in cold climates. So this is basically overwintering your tropical plants in the garage. And there is a process that I have been using that works really well. So I've been treating these perennials and overwintering them, overwintering them in an unheated garage in zone 5B. This one is four years old. This one is three years old. And this little one right here is two years old. Now, because tropical plants are tender, perennials that are treated like annuals because of our cold climate, if you remove the cold winter, they become perennials. If you're like me and enjoy these beauties, it can be costly buying all new tropical plants every summer. However, it is possible to keep your tropical plants for subsequent summers by overwintering in your garage. This will allow them to go dormant and keep their roots from um, freezing. So that's the key here, is the roots cannot freeze. They can go dormant, but the roots cannot freeze. Some tropical plants do best with uh, winter rest and do require a winter rest. And so that's what's the beauty of having your tropicals go dormant, but the key is not to let it freeze. And that's, what, that's how you can create a perennial tropical plant, if you will in a cold climate. It's best to grow your tropical plants in containers. So as you can see, I have all of them in containers. Uh, it's best to do that during the summer months, which will allow you to bring them in the garage over winter, um, right when the temperatures fall below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what's happening right now. In my climate, we do get these beautiful warm Indian summer temperatures between 40 and 60 degrees, but the nighttime temperatures drop very low. And this is where the plants get damaged. As you can see, the plants have gotten damaged from the cold temperatures right here. And you can see where these got damaged from the cold temperatures, although they were still blooming and they were still putting out new leaves. And then of course this one suffered quite a bit. So that's why it's time to, um, let them um, go dormant and put them to bed. Before bringing your plants inside to hibernate, give your plants and pots a good washing with a garden hose. Just get a jet hose and just wash the top and the bottom leaves and make sure you're getting all the insects and all of the bad stuff off the plants. Then carefully inspect for pets in which you could just pretty much just kind of look around and inspect for pets like mites, scales, white flies, meaty bugs, or aphids. And then you want to spray the plant down with an insecta, uh, uh, insecta uh, I'm sorry, an insecticidal soap, uh, especially on the leaves. In my case, I like to use neem oil. So once you have done that, then it's time to go ahead and start cutting your plants back. Now, if you want to overwinter them in your house, that's where you want to um, check for insects and wash them down with a jet spray as well as checking for insects if you want to bring them indoors. And I just want to make that clarification. However, in my case, I won't be uh, doing that. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting them back. So let me show you what I do. So um, you want to cut the tops of the plants back to six to eight inches. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this back. Is, isn't that a shame? And it's, it's November, and I would have loved to keep this going for a while, but I don't have any more room in my house, 
and I have no way of overwintering them, but I've been very successful in overwintering them in my garage, it's an unheated garage, and treating them um, as a um, perennial so they can have a winter rest. But it's just kind of uh, heartbreaking to see these beautiful foliage and flowers have to go. All right, so I'm gonna continue doing that. So again, I'm cutting it back 68 inches and I'm cutting all of the stalks back 68 inches. Now there are some people who, who don't mind taking the, the bulbs out of the soil and overwintering them. And that's great. There are many, many different processes you can use to overwinter your cane and lilies and your um, a, a tender tropicals. But because I grow them in containers, and as you could see, this particular one in this container again was four years old. And you, could, you see how huge and big it was. If I was to buy that, this, that size in the store, I would pay way close to $100. Every year, they come back bigger and healthier. As you can see, they were doing really well outside and our temperatures was getting close to 32 degrees. But I could see some winter damage. And this process has worked for me. And if it works for you, then continue with the process. So I've cut this all back like this. Now you can see I have aged wood chips on top of this pot. And I do this because in the winter months, during the winter months I should say, I don't want the soil to dry out. Now this plant's gonna be transitioning into dormancy and it won't need frequent water for a while. So I'm gonna only water once a month and then I'll check it periodically um, because I do not want the roots to dry. You want to move your container in a cool, dark place. As you can see, I have this container on wheels, so it makes it easy to be mobile. And so I'm going to move it into a cool, dark place in my garage. I'm going to make sure that the temperature does not drop below 32 degrees. If we get those temperatures that are, get in the teens or in the single digits, and in my climate it can do that, I'm just going to drape a frost blanket over the containers in my garage that I do um, have overwintering because again my garage is unheated and it stays probably about 10 degrees warmer than the outdoors and I do have it closer to the house so um, it's not going to get that cold impact right away as if, it, if, as if it's close to the garage door but I do monitor the temperature inside the garage and make sure that the temperature doesn't drop below 32 degrees. So as you can see this plant is going to go into dormancy and next year I'm going to have a plant that's going to be twice the size that you saw earlier. And once my once um, once the springtime occurs, these plants come out of dormancy right away. I don't have to force it out of dormancy. It literally comes out of dormancy. Around late March or April, I could start seeing new growth coming up. Now all this is going to die back, just like your regular perennials. This is all going to die back. And then the beauty of spring is to see new growth coming from my cane and lilies right in my container. I do have to help it acclimate so when the temperatures start getting above 50 degrees in uh, late April or May I'll just wheel it outside and then bring it back in um, during the um, nights when the temperatures get below 32 degrees. Usually around late May or early June it's ready to go back out on my patio and 
and um, show itself off as it always does. And so I wanted to share that with you. I'm also going to do the same way with this one. I'm going to put this one on wheels. Now this one's two years old and it did suffer some winter damage. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this back. I am going to put aged wood chips on top because I don't want it to dry out too much during the during the dormancy. So this here now is ready and it did pretty good being two years old. So I have been accumulating Canaan lilies and tropicals over the years because I love tropical plants. I'm just not going to spend the money on tropical plants every year. So instead of digging up the entire plant and saving the roots and the bulbs and then replanting them next um, the next spring, I would just rather than just grow them in a pot. They don't have to be replanted. They dormant. They go dormant very well. Tropical plants do best when they um, do uh, have a winter rest. And this is what I have been able to accomplish, and it's been very very successful. And that's why I want to uh, share this with you because I know there are people who do have tender perennials, do have tropical plants and do not want them to die back and maybe do not want to dig up the, the, the bulbs and the roots and try to keep them healthy over the winter months. And if you're that type of person like me, then consider just planting them in containers and treating them like perennials, allowing them to go through dormancy because they do love that winter rest, um, keeping them in a dry place in your garage, watering them once a month, they will actually come out of dormancy on its own in spring. Make sure you're acclimating the plants back outdoors over time, maybe over a week. If you have your pots on wheels like I do this one right here, see if you have them on wheels like this, it makes it easier to acclimate your larger plants because in this particular case, I will take them outside during the day let them get sunshine and then bring them back at night so that I can keep them from freezing during the um, nights when the temperatures get below 50 degrees and that's the key. We don't want the plants outside at night with the temperatures below 50 degrees. So I'm going to continue cutting this one back because as you can see it's got some winter damage, it's got some cold damage, and I didn't want to lose it, so it was time. I have other perennials in here, which is marigolds. I have my marigolds. I am going to cut those back. I'm not going to dig them up. I'm just going to cut them back just like this. I'm going to allow these to go into dormancy as well. Same way with the marigolds. Some of the marigolds that I've already dried, I'm gonna save the seeds on these. This got winter damaged just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the seeds on these. This marigold, it did not get winter damaged. And I think the reason why is because it was against the brick um, house. But um, I would do the same, follow the same process with this particular cane and lily. And next year, these perennials are going to be twice as big and they're going to give me the joy that I have been experiencing with tender perennials and cane and lilies. So just wanted to share that with you for those who love doing container gardening. However, do not want to dig up the entire plant. If you um, want to have an effective uh, container with perennials and um, excuse me, uh, tropical plants and, and canine lilies and you want to treat them like perennials and you want them to be a lot more mobile, this is what has worked for me and has been effective. So you saw how large this plant was. That plant was four years old and every year it gets bigger and bigger. So I'm excited to share this success with you and if you're um, one of those people who want to uh, keep their uh, perennials from freezing, excuse me, keep their tropical from freezing and turning into a perennials. Uh, consider this process and let me know how you're doing with your Canaan lilies and your tender perennials in a cold climate. I'd like to hear about it. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like button.